Today we're gonna see a Canadian who's just had it with somebody breaking into his home. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. I'm grateful that you are here watching us at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Montreal in Quebec. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. It's 2.30 in the morning, and you see this door open on the side of this garage. These dudes are breaking into this house. Thankfully, they have some cameras on so we get to see it all. You're gonna see them grab a couple things and throw them into bags. Not sure what that is about. They're gonna go in the house and one of the guys in the house is gonna wake up and hear them. We have audio from this surveillance video. Let's listen in and see what happened. New story that I have linked in the description says that these guys ended up getting away and that police were quote unquote looking for them. Uh, they got some pretty decent looks at them. I don't know how much work they're putting into that though. All right, we gotta make some obligatory jokes, right? He's like drilling that guy in the face. Oh, sorry, sorry, eh, sorry. Oh man, this guy's got some sand. First rule here, of course, is lock your doors. Make sure that your exterior doors are all locked when your family goes to bed at night. And I would also encourage you, if you have an exterior door on your garage like this, to make sure that the door from the garage into the house is locked as well. And for obvious reasons here, because we want them to have that. I also wanna take a second and talk about surveillance cameras. I'm a big fan of surveillance cameras because it gives you increased attention, being able to be aware of what's going on in more places. Love them on the exterior of the home, love them in areas like this in the garage. But remember, they are not security by themselves. They are surveillance. They tell you what's going on. They do not keep you safe. Only you can do that in the moment. Now, in this case, if you had some kind of a motion sensor, whatever, your phone wakes you up, says, hey man, somebody's in your garage, maybe you can see that and do something about it before they are right on top of you. Now, of course, this is Canada, not the United States. And so, you know, uh, they're really not allowed to use firearms for self-defense there. Instead, this guy comes out and he's getting after him. Well, listen, two guys break into your home. Nobody's coming to save you. You better do something about it. And these guys are boogieing out of there. That's a good thing. And he's gonna have to chase them off. This is gonna end up being in quite a hand fight. I certainly wish that he had some kind of tools on him because he put himself at real risk here. Again, this is why I believe the right to keep and bear arms is so important. I do know here in the United States, plenty of people say, wow, man, somebody breaks in my house like that, I'm just gonna shoot them. And, and in most cases, again, you have the presumption that you're acting reasonably when you use deadly force to protect yourself in your home. But don't forget that's a rebuttable presumption. You still have to be facing an actual imminent threat of death or great bodily harm. So make sure that you're making good moral decisions there, right? Now he gets in a good fight with these guys and it's two on one. That's no joke. You had a second one there. Your empty handed skills need to be very high. In order to win this kind of fight, you wanna stack them one in front of the other. We call that blockading or barricading. <clears throat> you wanna definitely work on that on the mats. Also here, I mean, this kid's in pretty good shape. And I want you to recognize at the very beginning fight here is about 30 seconds before he gets them pushed out the door. And a 30 second all out fight against two opponents is going to tax your cardio, right? So listen, 
If you don't have that kind of cardio, you don't even want to follow them out the garage door, quite frankly. Uh, this is one of those areas where I think obviously good physical condition helped this young man out quite a bit and physical fitness, not unimportant in self-defense. But of course, he chose to chase them out into the garage where he probably could have closed the door and locked the door if he didn't have that level of fitness. Now you might say, well, I'm glad he did. Well, sure, but he did put himself at some risk doing that, right? Now, once he gets them out the door here, he decides he wants to kind of hold on to one. And, and I'm not sure what the laws are on citizen arrests in, uh, in Canada at all. In many places in the United States, if you see a felony being committed, then you can usually detain that person. I, I just don't think it's necessarily smart. We see the outcomes here tell us that, hey, wait, this guy ends up in a choke. He ends up having to fight these guys more, gets punched in the face more, knocked over more. So I don't recommend that you try to make citizens arrest because of stuff like this. And of course, that idea in the head of Gregory and Travis McMichael sent them to prison for the rest of their lives. And so we don't want that to happen to you either doing terrible stuff like they did. So be very cautious to make good decisions. Now, he's got pretty good skills here when he's uh, on top position. He's got good hands. Dude has got some ability to throw some bombs. But notice here that he's got one guy inside and the other guy tries to open the door. Uh, thankfully, he didn't have access to that once that door was locked. And so that's a clue, friends. That barrier there of the door is very good. It would have been even better if the other guy was on the other side of that barrier as well, because then the fight would have been over. Now, I, I get it. You go, well, wait a minute. Now this guy's not going to pay for it. He's not going to pay for it anyways. He's going to end up getting the upper hand and getting away and going off on his merry way, which is your goal as a private citizen, not for them to get their way and get on their way, but for you to break contact with threats, whether that's a physical threat or a deadly threat. Now, this guy... I think is a warrior, man. I mean, obviously he's in great physical condition. You can see that from his physique. Also, you can see the fact he's got some skills. He's got great attitude. Uh, maybe a little bit of youthful exuberance here in trying to keep this guy, you know, uh, and, and make him pay for what he's done. What are you gonna do? When are you gonna call the cops here when you're trying to grapple fight with this guy? We'll say at the end here as well, understanding how to fight off what looks to be an incipient guillotine choke. Uh, that means some grappling training on the mats, whether that's jujitsu, judo, sambo, catch wrestling, something like that, some kind of grounded grappling training is a very useful tool in the life of a self-defender. I recommend it for everyone. And again, I think there is something to be said here about physical fitness and more than about you better have really high level of physical fitness so you can have these kind of fights, know what your level of physical fitness is so that if you don't have this level of fitness, you can go, nope, close that garage door and lock it and keep those guys out and end the fight a little bit earlier. I'm glad he was uh, up to the challenge of these two dudes. Let's make sure we learn these lessons so that we can cover our ASP.